Welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Dr. Lucy and in this channel we teach you about eye diseases and eye conditions and where you can get treatment if you need to. We also tell you some of the things you can do in the comfort of your home to just manage some minor eye difficulties. So be sure to subscribe so that we can alert you when we upload and we do this every week. Today let us discuss the effect of digital devices on children's eyes and general health. Children unlike adults are like an open book and any information given to them in any way has the capacity to have a lasting impression of them, on them. Sometimes even permanently whether physically, psychologically or socially. A child who is shown love or grow to be loving and one who grows in fear may dread people or just cause fear in many others. Since the lockdown happened, children have found themselves constrained in homes sometimes with very little space to play and digital devices have taken the place of physical playtime. Today, let us focus on the effects of these devices and the internet on children's eyes and their general well-being. Children are affected by digital devices in three main ways. That is the blue light emission, the content that they are watching, and the fact that they have to sit for hours and hours to watch or even study. As they are still developing, these effects can have lasting complications and implications on them. As opposed to an adult of say maybe 30, 40 years, a child of 5 years or thereabouts has to live another 60 years plus. So it is crucial for us to protect their st the stability and integrity of their bodies, including their eyes. The eyes are become adult sized by about 3 years of age, but they continue to develop up to the age of 25, although the main development occurs by the age of 8. So any process that interferes with this development before the age of 8 can deter the normal outcome of the development of the eye. So the main effects of digital devices on children are physical, psychological and social. Of course there are many others but today let us discuss those three. With the physical, the main effect here really is the eye. Eyes are usually relaxed and at rest when looking at a distance. Since most of the devices therefore must be watched at very close distance, the eye muscles must learn to work harder to help the eye focus by contracting and also changing the shape of the eye lens. In developing eyes like that of children, this can trigger these effects such that the eye continuously learns to look at near objects and becomes incapable of relaxing and what this means really is that this child will learn just to look at things that are near and in essence they will become short-sighted due to the overstimulation of the muscles and the lens to look at the things that are near. This means they may require treatment for short-sightedness to be able to see far because then the eyes are really not relaxed to see far. Blue light also scatters more easily and because of this is reduction in contrast and this can increase high strain. Normally the more the contrast, the easier is it to focus. So the more a child is on screen, the eyes must work even harder to focus because of that scattering of the light. And this increases the strain and a child will start having tension headaches due to muscle spasms and this can progress to migraine. Besides this, Overexposure to blue light can gradually cause a decrease in vision. Blue light is also important in regulating the circadian rhythm, that is the sleep-wake pattern. Blue light from electronic devices like what we are using, smartphones, computers, before bedtime suppresses the release of the sleep-inducing hormone which is called melatonin. And this makes it difficult to fall asleep. The light may therefore disrupt normal sleep patterns. Too much of this at night can disrupt this cycle causing sleeplessness. And this is evident in children who become restless at night as they struggle to sleep. They do not get to that deep sleep that gives the body rest and rejuvenation to be able to handle the next day's work. This certainly compromises their alertness the following morning. As a result, children may become lethargic to work and are only alive or become alive when they are on more exciting computer or phone games. 
if not well under this can have a lasting effect on their school performance or even life in general. So time spent on digital devices, especially on non-study activities, could have been used to do some physical activities like play or even house chores. This sedentary style has been linked to obesity and other physical illnesses like diabetes or even blood pressure and children can be affected too. Poor posture can have tremendous effects on the back, the neck, the shoulder and even cause arthritis. Let's now look at psychological effects and these can be subtle but they will surely happen if a child spends enough time on digital gadgets. Even the very mundane cartoons may have hidden adult content that children pick up as they continue to spend time watching. Children are really not mentally ready to differentiate between truths and non-truths and whatever is thrown at them is taken as the truth. They may therefore emulate the characters to their detriment and lose their unique selves there. The other effect that we talked about is social and I decry the loss of creativity that has happened ever since the internet came into play. Children may lose their power to express themselves either in speech or written word. What happens when a child must write their own resume or attend an interview? The internet has myriad of opportunities but may kill creativity for those children who spend time aimlessly on the screens. To mitigate this, therefore, let us discuss three things we ought to do to help our children become who they were meant to be within the digital space that we are living in. One of the ways is to limit the screen time of up to one hour per day for those children between two to five years of age and two hours per day for those between five to ten years of age. Always remember the main development of the eye occurs between zero to eight years of age. It is a critical time. For the older children, you have to be aware of how much time they spend on the screen for study and for play and limit this as well, but be realistic. To be successful in this, you must give them creative and alternative options to spend their time. For example, making simple house chores exciting. Reduced screen time means that you have well taken care of sleeplessness, back, neck pains, obesity, or other health-related complications that are associated with just sitting that sedentary life. Secondly, limit the content type by use of passwords. Even cartoons, as I have just said, have subtle adult messages that are not meant for children, and you need to protect your child from this. I really do not know how some of these escape scrutiny, knowing that the audience is children. Finally, protect the eyes of your child by installing blue light filters for the screens a child may be using and these are available for smartphones, tablets and even computer screens. These block blue light exposure from digital gadgets and some smartphones also have an auto blue protector and you can just turn it on. You can also get simple glasses with the blue light filter for use by the child when they are on screen. Remember also it is a good idea to have a two-hour break from the screens before bedtime to avoid disruption of the circadian rhythm that eventually disturbs the sleep pattern. This may be difficult at first but start with small goals like having one hour screen free and slowly build it up to two hours or even more before bedtime. When possible let the children avoid screen time or evening until the following day. If children sleep well, they will feel well rested and energetic to handle the next day's work. So this concludes our discussion today and I hope you now know the effects of blue light on children's eyes and their health including interfering with their sleep pattern and how to manage these effects. If you have not already watched the part one of this series, I will put a link below for you to watch. We will be discussing the part three of this series and you do not want to miss it. A question for you today is how many hours is your child spending on digital screens and what are you doing or what are you going to do to help them not be overtaken by the screens? Let us know in the comments below. To stay up to date with our latest videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button. Until next week, goodbye.